thank you. Uh, thank you all for joining the session. Um, my name is uh, Mufrid Krivic. Uh, I'll be talking about uh, <clears throat> building quality in the legacy system. I work as a developer and coach in a company called uh, DIPS here in Norway. Um, we work on uh, uh, patient records for Norwegian hospitals and uh, been in the market for more than 30 years. Naturally, I've been present for so long. There are some legacy systems uh, that are still in production. So I'll be drawing from uh, some of that experience in, uh, in my talk. So uh, first of all, what is uh, quality? I don't believe there is a, a definition that we all agree upon. So that prompted me to um, uh, uh, look uh, uh, for a definition from uh, different pr perspectives. Now, there are a bunch of models out there that deal uh, with their problems from different perspectives. One of them is uh, uh, Maslow's uh, hierarchy of needs, a well-known model. So why I'm bringing this up? Well, uh, some years ago, Goiko Ajic published a blog post called Redefining Software Quality, where he used Maslow's model as an analogy for defining software quality. So I'll try to uh, walk you quickly through the main takeaways from Gros, uh, uh, Goiko's post and then show you how did we go on applying that approach in our uh, system. So as in Maslow, uh, there is uh, uh, the bottom layer, he called it physiological needs, Goiko defined it as deployable and functional software. And at this level, that's where you do, uh, your, you're working on the quality methods that form the backbone uh, of the quality, uh, like test-driven development, you count, you try to reduce the bugs and increase the code coverage. You work with uh, uh, some uh, users that uh, apply, uh, give you some early feedback on your design, and uh, you need to cooperate with IT operations department at, at your customers to ensure that the uh, software is deployable. So given that the software is, it works as specified, is deployable, you are concerned with uh, performance and security. You do risk analysis, um, uh, uh, performance testing, and according to Goiko, it's here that investment in architecture and design patterns start to pay off. Um, next level is uh, 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 usability. Is actually the software possible to use in production? You do usability testing and you apply uh, design thinking and you have to cooperate with the end users to verify. It. Now, according to Goiko's model, uh, 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 corporate environments have traditionally invested in those three levels and stopped there. However, there are two more uh, levels to discuss. Uh, the first one is useful. So even though the software is usable, is it useful? Does it provide any value added features for anybody at, at uh, your customers? So you try to deliver uh, software as often as you can and you, you monitor the, the uh, the metrics in your production environment in to be able to verify it. And you need to cooperate with both end users and perhaps a management at your customers to, 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 to verify, to check this one out. The, the topmost level is successful. Uh, and here you need to align uh, uh, your software artifacts with the business goals of your company. You're trying, um, so to put it bluntly, did you make or did you save any money with the software you just delivered? Um, here you use uh, product management methods such as impact mapping that can help you uh, and uh, reach this goal and you need to cooperate uh, among others with decision makers that uh, are uh, uh, giving a green light for further investments in your software. So as well uh, as Maslow uh, states, uh, so does the Goiko that you need, need to find the focus on what is good enough at the lowest level of the quality uh, uh, pyramids. Uh, so over investing in the methods that are appropriate at the lowest level will not yield the gains you are you're after. However, investing on the topmost level, uh, the more the better. So how did we go on approaching this? Uh, I call this the art of asking questions. Um, our team found out that there were a number of issues we were dealing with uh, when working in the legacy systems. And uh, uh, it turned out that those issues could be mapped relatively well to this uh, pyramid of uh, software quality. Uh, so we 
uh, decided to challenge ourselves continuously for each which we are working on. We try. We decided to challenge ourselves by asking the questions uh, related to different categories that could uh, uh, check all those boxes on the uh, a software quality uh, pyramid. So I'll try to give you some examples of uh, how this is work. So if you remember the. The bottom layer was uh, deployable software and what was particularly interesting in context of legacy system that more often than not there are some manual steps involved in the delivery process. W what does it take from your, from your, for your software uh, to, to actually reach the production environment at, at the customers? So at least you need to be aware of those uh, manual steps. You can automate them, improve them if you can. At least be aware and not do not uh, uh, create any impediments for your customers that need to still perform those steps. So, uh, given that software is deployable, how about um, uh, functionality? Well, uh, besides the basic conditions of acceptance, of course, uh, the integration is, is the issue here. Uh, uh, how do you go on by testing integration points with other parts of the system? So, what are your dependencies? That turned out not to be as trivial. Uh, as it seemed to, to find out. So here, uh, the best advice is actually to uh, deploy some soft skills and try to talk to people in your organization. Try to find people with knowledge with other parts of the system so they can uh, uh, bring you up to speed on whether or not you are affecting any parts of the system that you're not intended to. And exploratory testing is uh, actually a simple yet effective technique in this slide. So, um, Given that we are checked those two boxes, uh, how about maintainability? Well, talking about integrations, I suggest documenting integrations. Uh, uh, for instance, uh, domain-driven design suggests using context mapping to document relations between uh, different parts of the system, as well as visualizing relations between teams that work on those uh, uh, parts, uh, meaning that you get a visual map of the communication structure of your organization. I suggest investing in logging, especially for um, the parts of the system that uh, uh, deserve it. Uh, deserve it. Uh, for instance, if you have cases where uh, single user uh, crosses subdomains, different subdomains in the business process, or the multiple users collaborating <coughs> on, on a single subdomain, those areas deserve more logging to be able to monitor that usage in production. And moving up the ladder, we get the security and performance. There are a number of uh, uh, obvious questions to ask, authentication, authorization, and, and such. However, what we discovered was uh, particularly interested was uh, trying to discover patterns uh, that could lead to uh, issues in production under high load. And uh, simple yet not so simple technique was code analysis or code reading that, that, that could help us discover those patterns on top of the, all, all those automated tests that we, we've uh, written. So instance, for instance, if you have if you deploy asynchronous communication between components in your system, are you sure that you can deal with messages arriving out of order? Try to read the code to assess that. Uh, I will not say uh, too much uh, on uh, multi threading because there was an excellent talk by Scott Vlasin accidentally on Wednesday where he presented a very structured way to increase your confidence in uh, your code being able to operate in multi threading uh, environment. I'll, I'll recommend to check that one out. So, uh, what was the most challenging for us were the questions regarding usability and usefulness of our software. Those questions turned out to be very domain specific. So uh, it required for us to, to, to know how is the legacy system used today and how uh, will we change uh, existing users behavior when we deliver new functionality. So two examples are uh, uh, our customers uh, have a number of uh, specific configuration and customization they have applied on site. Uh, so we needed to know about those configuration modes and need, needed to uh, ensure that our software still works under those circumstances. Another example that most of our customers are large organizations and they have the own projects of their own uh, that, that help them work more efficiently. For instance, there was uh, some years ago, the uh, number of uh, large hospital trusts in Norway decided to co-locate their databases to a, a common data center. 
So that's spun off a number of requirements for our software and uh, the customers still assume that those requirements are valid. So you need to, you need to be aware of those uh, uh, existing requirements and uh, that the customer just take for granted. Um, so need to respect the projects going on by the customers uh, at their own uh, at their own pace. Uh, so uh, this was domain specific. So you need to, of course, to apply it to your domain. So what about successful? Uh, well, there are no um, simple set of questions that that can help us uh, 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 at this level. However, there are two techniques that combined uh, in our experience gave uh, a very good results. Uh, the first one was a product management approach called impact mapping. Uh, here in my uh, team room, there is a poster uh, on the wall, an impact mapping. We are big fans of that. And combined with domain driven design as a design approach and philosophy. Those two, uh, in our experience, paved the way toward successful software. Um, okay, summarized uh, asking these questions, different categories uh, could map well to uh, Goiko's quality of software pyramid meaning uh, that you could increase your confidence that you invested a, a, a good deal of um, uh, uh, in, in quality in your legacy system. What, what is the consequence of applying this approach? Well, actually, that every piece of work is bigger than initially assumed, which is fine because that proves that you are working with quality, you are investing in quality, and you're trying to build the quality in the legacy system as you go, instead of, as opposed to applying some QA approach on the top of it. So choose a set of questions that work for you and then gradually expand. If it's one takeaway I'd like you to consider is that uh, there is a common thread to all this, and that is a learning. Uh, we need to become relentless learners, try to nourish the culture, a learning culture in organizations with the aim of strengthening the team's ability in decision making in complex environments. So that's about it. Reach out to me. There's uh, my blog, Twitter, on the blog, there is a post about this topic. Thank you.